time to meet with I did have a conversation with our attorney. Um, Let me were, there, the were there multiple questions? Yeah, we'll go through it. Okay. Um, oh, see if I can we're opening them. the meeting for the Conservation Commission's subcommittee on land management. And today is the 7th of May and the time is 1211. And we have myself, Alex Orr, Michelle Lobb, uh, Dave Zomack, Aaron Jock, Bruce Stedman can't be here today. And I cannot see hands from the public if they're here. So I'm going to rely on Aaron to let us know if there's a member of the public present and would like to speak. If there is a member of the public, I ask that you raise your hand at any time that you have a question or want to speak. Otherwise, we will pause infrequently for public comment. There there are no attendees right now. Yeah, I can't, I don't know them. Mm. I, thank you for telling me. So uh, I'm gonna ask that we uh, share the screen on the agriculture and I can bring that up. I've got it here. And then what I would do is go down through the questions, uh, the comments that are in it and I'll try and jot down whatever we come up with. So I have a revised copy to provide to Bruce. So let me um, share my screen. I thought I had it right here. So, um, and share screen. Here we go. Yeah, okay. Um, just first off, I <laughs> the new language in this is yellow. And you'll see in the beginning, I was doing some work on this, uh, like the color that I have for goal and objectives. Um, and I just was fiddling around some words on the goal. To me, a goal is a state, is a condition which we want to achieve, um, which hard to measure. Um, um, so I just wrote down selective conservation land is in productive agriculture and keeping with key purposes. And uh, then I, the objectives are how we achieve. So I just jotted some down here, issue RFPs, issue licenses, review annual reports from the director um and have site visits and then what bruce wrote are more strategies on how to achieve those but i'll come back to that with him so the first comment down here is um is the screen where you folks are visible is that getting in the way of you seeing my screen i can see it I can okay see it. so the first one from bruce is um directed to you Dave, and whoops, I lost my screen. Okay. Uh, I gotta go back, I gotta go back up. So I had it at 150, that seemed to work pretty good. Is that large enough for you folks to see? Uh, it's a, it's it a could little, be a little bigger. Yeah. A little small. Okay. I was I was trying to use Zoom. That's too big. That's fine with me. Yeah, but you can't see the comments. Oh, I can't see the comments on the right. Yeah. 
Okay. So Dave Bruce has got this comment uh, called research. It's the first one. Dave Z will explore issues with town attorney first, then need to discuss a rating or point system. And I think that comment goes. To the preference for Amos residents and Dave, I think you brought this up. one yes yes yeah. so, so i have spoken to town our town attorney on this sharin everett who works with many many other community uh communities in mass um she was going to give me a little more information but her quick response was yes the commission can give and probably should give preference to amherst residents uh you know the scenario you know we talked about a couple of different scenarios but uh you know the basis of this being this is land in the town of amherst owned by the town of amherst and the res essentially the residents of the town have paid for the acquisition and the maintenance of this land so the idea that people from other communities you know there's a beautiful community garden in orleans mass near my brother's house i can't rent a a plot in that because i am not a resident of orleans massachusetts Uh, it is reserved for the residents of, um, of of Orleans in that case. So likewise, uh, the commission can and and probably should limit these to Amherst residents. So, okay, yes, you can do you use, you you, you use excuse me you use the word limit. So far, we've only got preference. Well, in other words, you can you can give strong preference. in okay. your consideration of licenses to, uh, you know, you have three farmers and two of them are from Amherst and one is not, you can give more points or preference, if you will, to the two who reside in Amherst. So I'm just typing some notes for Bruce. It doesn't, it, what I'm writing won't become part of the document. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> anything else? Any comments? I mean, I think we had talked about like other point based um, uh, criteria on which the award would be based, like potentially, I know, I think Michelle had mentioned like if it was for, you know, some type of community focused purpose or, or otherwise, I don't know if, if it's necessary for us to even get into that level of detail. Um, yeah. But. Um, I think somewhere in an appendix, uh, there should be a, what we're talking about now ought to be spelled out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to get reinvented every time somebody comes across, and we won't be we won't be consistent. I yeah. agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, I would also support not just residents, but maybe like on par with that is having some kind of like community component. Some. Um, Like maybe they weren't residents, but they had a strong interaction or involvement with the community to consider that um, strongly. Uh, I don't know if we're spelling out the point-based system, but but to me, it's the community connection, be it residents or because it could be an Amherst resident that's outsourcing the food to a different community. And to me, that's not as desirable as the food staying in the community personally. But mm -hmm. yeah, like if it was a farmer growing to produce for a food bank or something, we might give them preference over like a private commercial operation, I guess is one that occurs to me. Mm -hmm. Give me some words, Michelle, including community what? Um, okay, let's see. Um, benefit, maybe? Community benefit? Yeah, benefit, engagement. Um, I don't know. We can... Resources. Something that, something we can put our mind around, uh, uh, including... 
Um... Well, <clears throat> well I, I like the word benefit. A, a great example would be, let's say there was a, a farmer who wanted to rent some land from, you know, conservation land and 30% of their produce went to the mobile market that serves Amherst re low and moderate income residents in Amherst. I think that should give them point, you know, the, in a point system that should be important or that could be important. Mm -hmm. Follow the social benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Social yeah. and, and goods. Um, <laughs> like mm -hmm. cause they could open it up to like interns or something or I don't know. That's social, but actual commodity benefit too. Mm -hmm. Just, I think benefits is good enough, right? Then yeah. without the qualifier of social. Including benefits of, including social benefits or including benefits of social community. I'm getting... Benefits, benefits to the Amherst the, community or yeah, something? Yeah, benefits, benefits to the Amherst community. community. Yeah, I like that. Um, you know, a couple of people speaking there at times. Yeah. Benefits, benefits to the Amherst community. I think that's what mm -hmm. we all said at the same time. Again, a farmer, you know, he or she gives 20% of their produce to Not Bread Alone or, or the Amherst Survival Center or you know, or Craig's Doors shelter or something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. S sounds good. And we had um, Bruce what, uh, discuss Michelle's idea of holding some parcels for tribal engagement, subsistence farming. Do you, you want to add that to a purpose, Michelle? It's later on the agenda, but we're here. Um, they may not be. I, do. I mean, I, I'd like to leave that open to development and discussion. So okay. I think it has to be discussed more, but if, if we're sort of codifying the purposes right now, maybe we could put that in generally and. Okay. I'll just leave it there. It may not be perfect, but I'm not going to let the good get in the way of the perfect. Uh, the perfect get in the way of the good. Okay, we'll move on. Discuss. Oh, this is me. Um, I don't know if there's need for discussion. This has to do with um, non-lethal weapon, non-lethal means. And um, I I don't have a big, it was just a comment I made to him that removing animals just creates a cone of depression and that's quickly filled by others. Um, I don't have a need to discuss this. Most people have questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we don't need to get into the details, but I think one, one, one complexity here will be like beavers, beavers flooding lowland land that is farmed. Um, what, you know, w w yeah, there are very few non-lethal options uh, with that. Um, but anyway, we don't have to get sidetracked on it, but... You know, yep. we're not we're not going to remove coyotes we're not going to remove you know crows you know blah 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 so. so do we do we have ag land in floodplain absolutely we visited one remember most, um, most oh, yeah. of it is in one yeah. way yeah. way shape or form uh, one know. thing i would say just this is just an idea uh something that i feel very very strongly about is that there should be no rodenticide or anything like that used on the conservation lands because uh, i think this is something that farmers 
have done um, in my experience in the past. Like if there's like rabbits or squirrels or chipmunks, they'll put down some sort of poison. And um, that is just horrendous for the whole food chain. So like I would expressly prohibit any type of rodenticide or chemical. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I support putting that in there explicitly. I mean, it, mm -hmm. reading it, it would prohibit it, but because that would be a common practice, maybe just being very forthright. Um, back to the beavers, I would, that would be a hard one for me to kill a beaver. It was there for the farm. So maybe we can just be proactive about the risks of each of these areas um, or just kind of, I mean, some of the ones I'm thinking of wouldn't be that susceptible to beavers and some would be very susceptible to beavers. So as we're going through and sort of rating of, you know, appropriateness of land use, just consider that so we don't get to that issue. That was more a general comment, I suppose. I just mm -hmm. don't want to have to have that conversation <laughs> later on. Um, yeah, I mean, we do try to use like flow control devices and stuff like that wherever we can to keep water levels from flooding roads and things. Yeah, and beavers do a good job of holding back water during flood, during big rain events. Mm -hmm. So um, I hear um, I hear a um, tendency to avoid removal of beavers. Am I right? I don't yeah, know. I, how to put it. I I think that's been our unwritten policy for a long time. I think um, the only exception to that would be if significant infrastructure is threatened. Um, yeah, right now we're talking about ag land. Yeah, no, I just wanted to make sure people hear me on that. Uh, quick example is Middle Street right now. I'm very concerned about the beavers east of Middle Street. Um, yeah, we were whole, there yesterday. Yeah. There's they... Um, they don't see that that beaver deceiver there seems to be doing its job and who knows what they'll do with the box culvert that's going in on 25. Yeah. It's an ongoing assessment there. So moving along. This um I just I think um uh, I didn't understand this business about licenses may be renewed by the commission at any time for good cause. If a person license doesn't expire for five years, why would we renew it before then? Is that supposed to say revoked instead of renewed? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be yeah, revoked or... Exactly. Yeah, yes. I think that that was just a... Uh... Uh, probably an autocorrect issue. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be revoke. You're right. You're right. Okay. That does away with that. Mm -hmm. um, next was from Bruce. Discuss how they will notif be notified and he's got language in here. This is talking about neighbors. He's got, I'm trying to figure out, okay. Involvement of butters and basically what this new language says is there's gonna be an RFP, uh, a butters will be notified. So that kind of takes care of that. Yeah, I sent Bruce some language too. Yeah. Yeah, I think this works. I, I had also talked to him and, and I think he originally had or we had originally had something about a public hearing. And I said, I don't want this to be a public hearing. It's just a public meeting where this will be discussed. Yes, this this is not, I don't think, the final language that Bruce intended. I sent Bruce some um some language that kind of clarified when, so for example, if it's an existing agricultural use and we're issuing an RFP, a butters would not be notified. But if it's a, like a fallow uh, area that was in conservation jurisdiction in terms of resource area impact, then a butters would be notified 
because we'd have to file a permit for the given activity. Um, so I don't think that that's quite been updated here yet. I'm a little confused, Aaron. Why would we, first of all, almost like if we just take today, almost none of our land is in active agricultural use. So every we can assume everything is fallow. So why wouldn't we notice the at least let abutters know that something new is being considered in their big backyard? Is that I, I lost you there? Yeah. So so yes, we would, but only through the wetland permit process, not through the RFP process, if that makes sense. So if we're, for example, tilling a floodplain that hasn't been tilled in 20 years, we would need to file a permit for to permit a change of use in a resource area, and the abutters would be notified through that process. But we wouldn't be notifying them through the RFP process that, you know, a farming what operation. If, what if what if there are no what if there are no resource areas? Would we not let the abutters know? Well, that's. I think that's a, a point of discussion of whether, you know, in those cases, we would uh, do a courtesy notification. I think we should. Okay. Not not certified mail, but just a letter. So may, maybe we just make a note that um, abutters will be notified either through a wetland permit process or through a courtesy notification. Um if activities are taking, you know, agricultural activities are taking place on a given parcel or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. that okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a note to Bruce. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one here, we've got two comments. Um, oh, uh, this has to do with money and fees. Um, and my concern was that um, uh, hold on, I got to be able to see this. My thought was to have the town set up a special account for fees so they do not go into the general fund. And uh, that would go for agricultural fees, would also serve in lieu fees that we charge developers for being inside the 100, and 100 foot buffer and any other money so that they could come back, you know, to benefit the conservation land rather than disappearing into the general fund. That was the gist of my comment. Yeah, I actually um, have not really dug into this any deeper. Um, just so you know, the mitigation fees do go into a special account that um, so they do not go into the general fund. My understanding is that all other fees, be they dogs, dog license fees, rental fees, fees for the use of a space at Munson Library, all go into the general fund. Um, I, I, 
I just have not had a chance to ask about that, but I can. Yeah, um, I'm glad to hear that the in lieu fee is going to a special account. So that had to have been set up for that. And um, um, we, we're we going to pay for signage out of the agricultural fee. So um, it makes sense to be able to have that money available specifically so we can account for it if somebody asks what, how, we're, how we're spending it. Yeah, so, I will. I will inquire about it. I'm okay. something about it does not seem hopeful to me uh, that there will be some reason why uh, it goes into the general fund. But let me inquire because you, uh, uh, I, I know that all departments would say, well, that any fee that we then collect stays with our department in our department budget. And that's not how yeah, municipal accounting works. But let me inquire. Rental fees, land rental fees. What if we had to be a donation, like to either the trails fund or if we called it um, something other than a fee, just throwing out like a conceptual way to define it? Um. It's, yeah, it's a good idea, Aaron. Mm -hmm. I, you know, in the histor historically, uh, yeah, I give an example. That's how um, Mount Pollux used to be. Weddings at Mount Pollux used to pay a fee. This is how my, the previous director, they paid a fee to the Kestrel Trust. Kestrel Trust then donated the money to the town of Amherst for the trails account. Mm -hmm. So to me, that seems like a, either a creative workaround or something that's, I don't know, maybe not copacetic with, with municipal accounting, but mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. it's not a bad idea, Aaron, but yeah. Mm. Again, if we do it, should all departments be able to do it? So let's see. Well. Is the same true for like water and sewer and stuff like that? It all goes into the general fund. Water and sewer is a um, is a um, is a uh, enterprise fund, so mm -hmm. that's a little different. But for instance, the the recreation department can their fees, you know, you charge a fee for using a ball field or a pavilion or something. Can that go into a separate fund? It, it may be. Let me let me inquire. I'm not okay. saying, yeah. Uh, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, hmm, there may be some exceptions here. Uh, compare to pavilion fee. Yeah, there's a couple of comps I'll look into. Figure out where this comment goes to. I think we've moved on from that. Mm-hmm. Okay, we can move past this discuss mast and other wild edibles in another place we can i think we can remove that comment or resolve it I and mean, we already talked about that not being agriculture right what well, like wild edibles is inherently not agriculture we you talk were, you're talking about uh, mushroom harvesting and stuff like that. Yeah, like foraging is not agriculture. <clears throat> I think I think that belongs in like the conservation land rules. Mm, I agree. Like if you if for that comment, Alex, if we want to, I mean, you could just respond that we. Yeah. Okay. Like, the three dots next to the thumbs up is also a quick way to resolve it or delete it. Oh, hold on. I lost my, I lost my window. This is what happens to me all the time during ConCom meetings. Just want to mention that. It's really hard when you're sharing your screen and 
remoted in it's like whoa you keep losing things and disappearing on you <laughs> well, yeah. well while you're finding it i saw that our next question had to do with stocking is the stocking rates or are we no okay um my screen is not focused i don't know why not yeah it did the same thing to us or to me anyway i can't see it um and i'm kind of lost my place on where i was <laughs> oh now it's back that's weird <laughs> yeah I don't know. Um, maybe it has to do with where I have my picture of all of you. Maybe if you stop share and then reshare it again, maybe it'll, it might be just a um, resources issue. Like, um, Wi Fi kind of what it looks like yeah it Bandwidth. hasn't fully it hasn't fully loaded kind of thing yeah while we're doing that my daughter just sent a picture of a coyote um swimming between the um harbor islands in boston harbor <laughs> wow wow I guess it's, it going? it's making making the news swimming around the Harbor Islands today. Just out for a swim. Okay. Hot day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to get back in focus. I did stop sharing and came mm -hmm. back in. It, are our faces overlapping your documents? No, I've, I've, got it, I've got it positioned now so that I can see the toggle for up and down in the comments. Um, but I go from page two to page three and I, I'm and it blurs, having yeah. problems. Yeah. Hmm, I mean, I can still strange. see the comments, so maybe we could discuss the comments and respond in the comments and, um, sure. Yeah. Just I'm, I, I did have a, I did have a response to the next comment up, which is, has to do with the grazing and the stocking rates. Um, Let me get back to that comment. I kind of lost it. Um, yeah, keep going. Right there. This one here? Yeah. Okay. Let me move your faces. Um, zoom. Review. View. I'm still on 150. I've, okay. According to who? Who defines reasonable stocking limits, organizing, uh, overgrazing, et cetera? What do, what do you have to say? Um, only that, you know, without doing a lot of research on this, I think we could just reference a source to rely on, which would also mean that if, you know, available science changes that that source would change too, and that the, our reference would be up to date. So I was just about to Google like who does agricultural research in Massachusetts that would determine like stocking rates and, and overgrazing and stuff. And that would be dependent on like dairy versus like uh, meat operations and what kind of livestock it is, but probably USDA is a good one um i don't know I, my suggestion is just to reference an organization that could be our go-to for the data rather than and it would be it. nrcs natural RCS? resource okay. conservation yeah. service because okay. they do yeah they do conservation planning for farmers all over the all over the state okay and so whether we're talking chickens or pigs or or cows or goats uh they would you know, per acre, you know, they would help help us determine what is a, okay. what is a reasonable stocking limit. Not able to uh, write in the comment and not able to get the page in focus. I just started writing on my hard yeah. copy. Okay. okay, that works. Yeah, so per NRCS guidelines and probably, you know, some kind of nexus with like local conservation commission or site visits just 
just because NRCS says it, it might not jive with actual local conditions. So just some kind of <laughs> double check. Yeah. I'm smiling because we've had that we've had that happen a number of times. Yeah. Yeah. Where we we disagree with NRCS. So okay, so I wrote down simply reference NRCS guidelines and Nexus with um and I'll have to fix the lang language, but Nexus with local conditions. A conservation commission review something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. What's this? Well, <laughs> you'll have to oh, that. permanent. No, this must have to do with permanent structures. Bruce and I talked. I think this is what this is because it says DZ will talk to the building inspector. Yeah, Bruce and I talked about this when he called me on this a week or so ago. And, you know, we were kind of, we were talking about, uh, you know, poured, poured foundations, poured, you know, uh, a high tunnel versus a, versus a, um, you know, a structure, a um, greenhouse that has a poured concrete floor is really kind of the, the arena we're in. Um, you know, our barns, if something requires a building permit, is that beyond what the commission wants? You know, if, if a farmer wants to build a barn or is a well considered, a you know, a permanent structure, it would require a permit. So a building permit and probably a building uh, permit from the uh, health department. So... Yeah, I did. I did have a back and forth with Rob Mora about this. Mm -hmm. um, what did you find out here? Um, <clears throat> sorry, it's been uh, like a couple of weeks since him and I talked. Okay, so he provided. Um, so I guess this is it's a little bit of a tricky thing because sometimes permits that um, so structures that don't require a building permit do require a zoning permit um for example um like a storage shed that's under a certain size might not require a building permit but mm -hmm. if it's located in the floodplain may require a zoning review um this is new this is news to me um uh similarly fences um retaining walls over a certain size, prefab swimming pools. So there's like certain things that, again, are exempt from from building permit review, but might trigger a zoning review. So I don't know where we want to kind of straddle that line in terms of like a temporary structure. Um, so but there I, may, yeah. I've made a note, discuss with Aaron, re her discussion with building inspector. Mm-hmm. So I'll let you and Bruce work that out and put in some language. Okay. And I'll um I'll print it out and send it to Bruce. I just deleted it by accident. Yeah. Um, you just deleted it? Yeah, I'll get it back. Okay. So I want to be mindful of the agenda and we've gone we only got 10 minutes left. I'd like to leave agriculture where we are. I'm mm -hmm. sorry we didn't get any further but give time to Michelle to talk about the indigenous traditional use access. Okay, um, let's see. I think I sent an email out with this, let's see. Yeah, you did. Okay, um, I wasn't quite prepared to talk about it, sorry. So I'm just gonna try and pull it up. It was April 11. Okay. Um, I can read it to you if yeah, you want. Yeah, sure. I mean, yes. I I'm just trying to remember the, like the the legal circumstances of it, and I didn't like read. Well, this this yeah. had to do with the uh, San Francisco Bay, and uh, it being used as an indigenous land back model, where they used a conservation easement for cultural preservation um to to give land 
under that easement to um, an Indian Indian tribes for their use, whether they were federally recognized or not. And the instrument was a conservation easement for cultural preservation. So was it actually a cult, uh, conservation easement? Yeah. Okay. Cultural conservation easements. And then you gave us a link, and uh, this is uh, this email from you was April eleven at one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. And you gave us a link that takes us to uh, the to Bay Nature, and there's an article there. So if you uh, if you want to speak to that, at least get the conversation going so Dave can better understand it, and we can put it on the agenda for next meeting also. Um, I mean, again, I'm sort of just proffering this as an idea, um, because it is, has growing momentum and I think Amherst should be considering it. Um, and let's see, I mean, so in this case, the rights given to the tribe was to basically cultivate, um, culturally significant plants, I think, on on the conservation easement. It was like, it was a very small, I think it was pretty small, but- It was five it was acres. Five acres, which is not a lot for foraging and stuff, unless you're doing plantings and cultivation, basically. Um, but Amherst does have like fishing access on some land. So I don't know. I just, I think it would be a nice thing to consider and maybe talk about in case it comes up in the future or just leave space open for it within our planning right now so that um you know it's it's not like a cold cold topic um uh, later but mm -hmm. um and i don't know how it would work like if there were, you can't would you put like a easement on an easement or like are they i don't i don't know the extent to which it would be an agreement or a license or something like that but um yeah, I don't really have anything specific, Alex. I just wanted to talk about examples of people doing this elsewhere and talk about it happening in Amherst somehow. And okay, if so how about if we... no one's interested yet, but there might be in the future. So um, if Dave can find your email or I can forward it to Dave. Could you just forward it to everybody? Yeah, that would be good because I was looking for it going, I don't see it on April 11th. But yeah, anyway. I don't see it either. Yeah, it's April Thursday, April 11th. Oh, here it is. Okay. 104. If you can re forward that so it's at the top of the pile for inbox <laughs> yeah. for all of us, Aaron and myself. I, I I think we should be open to the idea. I think I know uh, I know you want to move on, Alex, but I think we should be open to the idea. I would love to see what other what other Massachusetts communities are also doing in this regard. I think it could fit it could fit under the agricultural piece that we've been talking about anyway. That maybe you know we 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 open that up to to tribes in the area who might want five acres of land, and and it could be a long term license, you know. Um, but we can explore that. Um, yeah, I think that's very interesting. Yeah, and I so this kind of I was pretty sure that the foraging wasn't agriculture, but this is sort of a different thing in that they might have like foraging plus ceremony. So there yeah. might be, you know, fire and gatherings and things like mm -hmm. that. So um it doesn't quite neatly fit into anything we have right now. That's why I just wanted to bring it up so yeah. that we have space for it. Yeah, no, and I didn't mean, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't mean to kind of put it in the ag, I said, I guess I meant some of it might fit in the ag piece, but some of it might be broader, like you said, ceremonies or or other, you know, reconnecting with that land. Um, so, um, and I think a lot of land trusts are moving in this direction. Um, and I know Kestrel has been working with some uh, tribes in, in the region um uh, on some of these projects so yeah we could follow their lead and and learn from them and see what what amherst might do 
Yeah, sorry, I only knew about this from my work, so I didn't really research it for Massachusetts, but mm -hmm. it's got momentum, so. Mm -hmm. Dave, do you know if Kestrel, like when you said that they're engaging, do you know if they've got a policy um, that we could look at, or is it you, kind of? You could reach out to to Kristen and see, Aaron, if you would. Um they're doing a couple of different projects. So um, I would reach out to them and see if they have a policy or or a model that they're they're working with. So I forwarded that to everybody. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, we'll give it some more thought. I would I would like for this to be mature enough in our policy document that we can include it for a larger discussion by the commission, uh, if you folks think that it's worthwhile, rather than having a discussion here, which is ephemeral. I, I, do, I do think it's worthwhile, but I think we all, <clears throat> we need a little more research. I, again, yeah. I'd love to see what yeah. local and regional um, communities are doing in land trusts. I'm probably not the person to do that homework, um, but I'll put it on the agenda for next week and we can keep putting it on the agenda until we're happy with where we are. Mm -hmm. We can make a decision on whether or not this is something to include in what we send to the larger commission for their consideration. Otherwise it's gonna drop. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Um, I don't have a package of updates. Uh, I will. I sorry about that, but I I I have a folder or a file with all the updated sections in it, and I've been kind of waiting for agriculture to finish up. Um, I'd really like to get through agriculture. I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, we just need to get through the questions and comments. Um, and uh, we're nearly there. I, hopefully the next time we'll, we will put agriculture on the agenda, Aaron, and hopefully we can get through it. Um, so. Should I just keep the agenda for the next meeting kind of the same? Cause it seems like we're gonna be um, yeah, it's going almost, through. Yeah, it's almost the same. Yeah. The next one, if we can squeeze it in, we got two minutes discuss fees and waivers and we've already done that we did it as part of the agriculture section and dave's going to talk to accounting and ask them for us for to to amend the account that's already set up for in lieu fees to include agricultural fees so i'm adding a discuss fees item well yeah it'll be feedback from dave okay and then, so we already talked about the agenda for next meeting. <laughs> it's essentially the same. Okay. Just want that, to sure. um, um, so we're done. Okay. I have 12.59. Um, but we also need to put on the agenda for next time, pretty close to the top, um, when we're going to meet. Mm -hmm. yep. And hopefully we... I'm going to call Bruce. Yeah, he, I think he said he's available in two weeks. And um, he started talking about days he's available. And I said, that gets way too complicated. We're, we're already on the schedule. And Aaron has trouble, you know, putting out notices. Let's just leave it the way it is. It's one o'clock. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to move that we close the meeting. If I have a second. Second. <laughs> second from Michelle. We're closing the meeting of the Conservation Commission Subcommittee on Land Use at 12 noon, May 7. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.